can hear you. Um, I think I'm a social worker. And we just heard from a teacher. <laughs> is that work that's typically been women's work is so undervalued. Teachers. Nurses. Nurses. I was just going to do that. As a nurse, as a teacher, child care providers. That's right. All predominantly women. That's right. And I feel like we need to do something about that foot. Uh, and right. even the governor, government does not pay, obviously does not pay teachers well. I don't believe that it pays social workers well. Um, I know it is the lowest paid nurses in the state. Wow. The wow. How, wow. Do, how do we change the culture to that? Right. Taking roles that women uh, take. The great question. How do we change the culture to value the caretaking roles and jobs that women primarily perform? Nurses, social workers, teachers, child care workers. You can uh, just imagine all of the personal work that's done to take care of our children, our elderly, each other. Well, I think there are a couple of things we need to do. One, I have legislation to expand the enforcement of the Equal Pay Act because I believe that... <laughs> that we passed this legislation some time ago, and women have made progress, and I'm very proud of that but it is still not equitable. And I think we should, because this is not just a women's issue, this is a family issue. You know, when a woman goes into the workplace, if she's married, that adds to the income of the family. If she's the single support of herself, her children, or maybe an elderly relative, then why shouldn't she be treated fairly in the workplace to get the pay that she deserves? But there is not just a legal aspect to this, um, because when I came out and said I wanted to do this, you know, there were those who criticized and said, well, no, I mean, women choose to go into those professions. They are lower paid professions. So in a sense, you're getting what you bargained for because of what you've done. And women have different life patterns. And the reason women don't get paid more is because we take time out to have children or to care for an elderly relative, the kinds of things that are part of the caretaking role that we assume. So I thought about that for a minute, then I thought, you know, that's a really curious argument because if you look at the top levels of society, you look at big corporations, you look at our great universities, there is still pay equity there too. You know, MIT did a survey comparing tenured professors, men and women. What did they find? They found their women tenured professors, who are the most educated, obviously the most advanced degrees. These are women who never got off the track. They stayed focused on doing what they were intending to do. There were disparities, disparities in pay, disparities in other conditions within the university. And to their credit, they took it on. So there is a cultural component to this. So, you know, we can change laws, but we also have to change attitudes. We've got to get people to treat each other with respect, no matter what our gender, no matter what our background, we've got to look at each other and see each as a precious human being and treat each other with fairness and compassion. Yes. <clears throat> First I want to... <laughs> It'll probably start, okay. yeah. Well, it's not working. Nope. Okay, this is better. Good. First, I want to say that uh, in, in researching your background, I'm, I've got to say I admire your advocacy for children, for women, for people who are disadvantaged. Uh, you started being an advocate for children through the welfare system in the Department of Human Services. And as a foster parent, I've got a question for you. <laughs> I have, uh, my wife and I have been foster parents in two different states in this country. And we found that there's this big hodgepodge, you know, mishmash of rules and regulations and things that people do and the rights that the children have, the rights that the families have. Uh, in some states, the parent who is not custodial can grab the child, run to another state, and be perfectly immune to any type of prosecution. 
do you think it's possible and would you favor a plan to kind of get some cohesion to this nationwide and take this to the national level instead of just leaving it to the states to fend uh, as they will? Well, first of all, thank you and your wife for being foster parents. You know, thank you. I started out way back in law school um, defending the rights of foster children. And it has been an issue that I have worked on my entire uh, public career. I feel very strongly about this. You know, obviously, we never want to break up a family. But there are some families, because of the way they treat their children or because of their inability to care for their children, who present such dangers to their children, such neglect, that unfortunately the state comes in and takes those children. When that happens, every one of us becomes the family of that child. When someone is removed from an abusive home or a neglectful situation, taken into the state, that becomes our child. Now what we want to do is try to return the child to his family if possible. Sometimes we can and lots of times we can't. We have uh, nearly 500,000 children in foster care in our country. A lot of them very, very young. And so we need a system that moves more quickly to make a decision about their future. If they can be returned home, if the parents can be worked with, we need to do that. We also need to give more respect to grandparents. If a grandparent can take a child, then let's not turn the child over to strangers. Let's put the child in with the grandparents. So, I've worked on this very hard. When I was first lady, we worked on providing more incentives for adoption and tried to provide more funding for the foster care system. And we improved the number of children going into adoption so they could have permanent homes. But unfortunately, we were like running in place because more and more children kept coming in. I've been working in the Senate to try to do exactly what you're talking about. Let's have a more cohesive, coherent system because if a child is taken away in one state, um, that child may languish in foster care for years, and then the child becomes unadoptable, there's no permanent home, whereas in the state next door, if he'd been taken into foster care, there would have been a big effort undertaken to either return him or free him for adoption. So I do think we need to have a national approach to this because these children are too precious, they are our children, and we need more good people like you to be foster parents to them until we have a better system to take care of them. And I will continue to work on that. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness.